Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. I'm on the road again with a little bit of time to finish up part two from when we traveled down to Miami and struggled a little bit at the beginning, but we're able to come back to about $925 when we last left off. There's about a dozen hands to cover in this vlog, which I hope you'll enjoy. I'm also looking to hear from you in the comments section about what improvements you'd like to see made for the upcoming vlogs in the future. So, without further delay, let's get started. It's been a pretty good day for pocket pairs, and we look down at pocket sixes. I'm surprised when players at this table don't limp, and I'm surprised when under the gun raises to $10. This is one of those raise or fold positions against an early position raiser, and pocket sixes are about the bottom end of our range. In this case, we elect a three bet up to $35, and only the initial raiser is interested in continuing to the flop. Low paired boards are good boards to continuation bet on as the preflop aggressor in many situations, and I think this is one of them. The player only has $40 behind, so when he checks to us, we just announce all in and throw in a few chips. He ends up folding. Three people limp and we raise to $15, getting a call from both middle position and the button. With the flop being 8 high in all spades, we see bet $35, since we have an overpair and a weak spade draw. Middle position calls and it's on to the turn. The turn pairs the board with the 2 of diamonds, and I don't see any reason to slow down, so we continue with a $45 bet and get called. The river does not complete the spade draw, and I'm not sure if we can get value from anything on a double paired board. So I check, and they check, then table my pocket nines, and he shows ace eight for a worse two pair. Wow, this has been quite a day for pocket pairs. I haven't seen a run like this in a while. Looking down at red jacks in the big blind, one of the more conservative players raises to $10. For most players, out of position with jacks is a raising hand, with the occasional flat call, but for this hand we bump it up to $35 and get called by both players. The flop comes out queen, queen, two, and there's definitely the possibility of a strong queen in one of their hands, possibly even quads. It checks to the cutoff who bets $100, and there's no way that we're ahead, so we fold, as does the initial raise caller and the cutoff is kind enough to show his pocket twos for a flopped full house. Another pocket pair. Pocket sixes again in the big blind. As usual, two people limp, but the button decides to raise to $5, and the small blind calls. Low to mid pocket pairs are not really great to play out of position unless you're getting the right implied odds to set mind. And for this hand, we raise to $15 which probably should have been 20 to 25 due to the min raise on the button. But anyway, everybody folds to the button and the flop comes out king 2-6. It's fantastic to flop middle set. I'm doing my happy dance in my head. Happy, happy, happy. But I wish the button wasn't short stacked with only $35 behind. With the board pretty well locked up, we can check at least one street before we get it all in. However, the button saves us the time and the energy and shoves after we check, which of course we snap call. The runout is 9 ace, and the button tables ace 6 for 2 pair, which we beat with our set. Well, we're finally getting around to a hand where I don't have a pocket pair, and there's an under the gun straddle. I have a playable hand against a straddle, so I'm raising, and in this case $20 seems fair. It's enough to thin the field down to two other players, with the cutoff and the small blind calling. There's three diamonds on the flop, so we have the nut flush draw, but that's about it. The small blind checks and we continue with a $30 bet, which gets the cutoff to fold and, as is typical with the small blind's playing style, he check calls, which is not surprising. We still don't have anything when the ten of clubs comes out on the turn, but it does hit our range pretty well. 
And if we do hit a diamond, the pot will be pretty big. So when it checks to us, we continue with another $50 and get called. The seven of clubs on the river at least gets us one pair, and we both check. The other player shows a queen with a weaker diamond draw, and it's on to the next hand. Middle position raises to $10 and gets two callers from the button and the small blind. We're looking down at ace-jack offsuit, out of position. Against these players, we have to weigh whether or not to raise or fold. One player is new to the table, and we have no hand history with him, so by default I'm inclined to raise. Let's make it $45. When he calls, he only leaves himself about $75 behind. The other two players get out of the way, and it's heads up. With a jack on the flop, this is a pretty straightforward play of going all in, and we get called pretty quickly. So I wonder if he has an overpair. And he does, with a pocket pair of aces. The runout doesn't help us at all, and so we show him our jack, and he gets our chips. We're back to a full table and in the cutoff with ace-queen offsuit. Under the gun one raises to $7, and we get a caller from the player to our right. He'd seen me in a few hands where I was very polarizing with betting bluffs and nutted hands. But in each of those hands, he always saw me raising preflop, because that's what I do. For this hand, we raise to $35. The big blind calls, under the gun one calls, and the hijack calls. Four players to the flop. The flop is six, jack, six, two clubs and a spade. And in a surprising change of action, the hijack, who cold called preflop, now leads out for $75. I suppose he could be on 7-6 suited or 6-5 suited, but I really don't see pocket jacks in his preflop limp calling range. He's just not that type of player. Besides, we have two overs to a jack. I'm feeling a little frisky, so I call. The turn is great, queen of clubs. Our opponent throttles down and checks to us. He most likely has a jack, so we decide to go all in. He goes into the blender for a bit and then finally decides to call off his remaining $125 with Jack King. Unfortunately, the river lands a king instead of any other monarch, and we end up losing the hand. But our opponent does say that when the turn came out, he thought we were trying to bluff him off the hand, which is why he called. So we get the desired action, just not the desired result. C3 left, so that leaves us with only the big blind as the ante, and the action starts under the gun. Under the gun raises $10 and gets a call from middle position. And since we're on the button with a relatively strong hand, this is a good three betting opportunity. I decide to raise to $55, and only the initial raiser calls. With a relatively dry board, the initial raiser tries to retake the betting lead with a $55 bet. So we raise to $155. After thinking about it for a few moments, the player folds, showing an ace of spades. Now we're in the hijack with king of clubs, jack of clubs, and raise to $15, which the button and the big blind call. The big blind checks blind, and the flop comes out with cards that don't hit my specific hand, and I don't really feel like representing a pocket pair against these two players, so the action checks around. An eight of clubs on the turn doesn't really change much, but the big blind decides to lead out for $25. With a club draw here, I think it's okay to continue. The player verbalizes that he doesn't want any more clubs to hit the board on the river, and that's true, it doesn't happen but we do get the king of diamonds for top pair. Unfortunately, he has a weak ace that has us beat. There's a few seats open, so to keep the action alive, I decide to straddle. We wind up with ace-queen suited, which is a pretty good concealed hand when the players are expecting me to raise anyway. Three players limp in, and we raise to $30, getting called by two of the limpers. The flop is pretty solid with an ace and two hearts. It gets checked to us, and we see bet $100. The button thinks for 30 seconds before deciding to move all in for $126, allowing the big blind to get out of the way and us to snap call. The runout looks great with another ace, but it's a heart. And then the three of hearts comes on the river, which gives the button a flush. That was a tough runout. For the last hand of the vlog, the table is full again, and we end up in the small blind with queen 10 off suit. There's an under-the-gun straddle and three limpers when it gets back to us. 
We're definitely at the bottom of our raising range, and there's really no reason to call with a hand that is easily dominated. So we end up raising to $35 and get called by the player who we just lost to on the runner-runner flush, as well as the player in the cutoff. It's not that interesting of a flop, and it checks around. The Ace of Clubs on the turn is no good to us, but it's a pretty good bluffing card since we raised pre-flop. If any of the players have an Ace, it's probably pretty weak. When the player decides to call, there's really no river card that we can bluff on. So, even when the Queen hits the river and we check, the opponent goes all in with the remaining $40 and we fold. Well, that about wraps up the session, and I hope you enjoyed watching. There were a number of hands that we were involved in that we got it in good and we ended up losing, and there were also some hands that our bluffs just didn't get through. So I hope you can learn from my mistakes so that you don't make them when you're at the poker table. We ended up buying in for $300, and I stayed a few hours after the end of filming, chipping back up to $775, making it a total profit on the day of $475. And in Miami, where the action is always good and the swings can be wild, I call a win a win. I'll be back down in Miami at the end of March when the World Poker Tour Cruise leaves the Port of Miami. They have a bunch of cash games and a bunch of tournaments. Hopefully I'll get a lot of footage from that so I can share it with you all. Wish me luck. See ya!